Okay, here's your interlude episode. Sorry for forgetting to put one before the Mario 64 video. Last interlude, I covered the Donkey Kong arcade titles, in which I thought the games were hard as fuck. But one game I specifically mentioned I was going to cover in this video was Donkey Kong for Game Boy, often coined Donkey Kong 94. So yeah, I'm covering Donkey Kong 94, and fuck all you guys who came to the Mario 64 video and disliked it. Look at this ratio! I know you're the 38 year old neckbeards. Starting off the game is set in 25M from the first game, to which most players would probably assume is just an arcade port, but let's be real, everyone who knows of this game's existence knows that's not true. Beat the opening level, pie stage, spring stage, and after you beat that final level, you beat the game. Except hell nah, there are 97 other stages spread across 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 new worlds, with new mechanics, level games, new moves, enemies, this shit, and entire bosses. It is insane how much they packed into this game. I mean, 101 levels is nothing to scoff at. However, I believe the amount of content they packed in here is a detriment to the overall experience. Out of the 101 levels, I'd only consider about 55 to be good or great, which for sure is the majority, but that leaves 46 levels, or nearly half the game, being average. I especially remember this being a problem for the Desna and Iceberg worlds, since not only do they both have 12 entire levels, but very little of them were any good. A lot of the shitty puzzles in this game come down to arbitrary difficulty. Take level 5-9 for example, there's a part in that level where you have to drop the key, go down this ladder, flick the lever, and go back up the long ass ladder to grab the key, which doesn't sound bad. But the reason I take issue with this part is because of this dumbass mechanic with the key. Basically, when you aren't holding the key, it's on a timer, and once that timer is over, it goes back to where it spawns. This could serve to make a quick speedrunning section to get back to the key just in time, but as shown here, all you have to do is climb the ladder as soon as you can, jump on top of the key as soon as you can, and grab it as soon as you can which isn't fun, and when you fuck it up, it can be really infuriating. This is not the only time this happens, by the way. It happens quite often, and funnily enough, it's basically all after World 4. That's actually my second biggest complaint with the game. It is really, really good in Worlds 1-4, to and if it kept up that level of quality, it probably would have been an easy 9 out of 10. But after those worlds, it kind of falls off, and all the stages are consistently only 5-6 to six out of 10 levels, maybe with a few exceptions, whereas in Worlds 1-4, to four, there wasn't a single bad stage. After that I wasn't having nearly as much fun, and by World 7 I was downright bored. I want to go back to those first four stages for a moment. In the originals, there wasn't much you could do to beat them, just running and jumping. In this game though, you can beat the first one in like 8 seconds. One of Donkey Kong 94's most defining features is the new moveset, and holy shit I love it. Side flip, handstand, and triple jump. In the first four levels, the side flip is the move I thought I'd use the most. Holding right and pressing left or vice versa, then jumping allows you to do an extra high jump. It is very good for the stages where you simply have to reach the top, but for puzzles it's not too useful. The handstand is where it's at, easily my most used move in the game other than obviously the normal jump. Pressing down and jumping will make you do a handstand, and in this state you can slowly shuffle around, shield yourself from barrels, and most importantly do an extra high jump. This is essentially just a better version of the side flip in almost every way. Sure, the extra boost from it is slightly worse, but it feels so much more natural to use because you don't have to move to use it. Plus if you jump as soon as you hit the ground in your handstand state, you'll get a slightly higher boost which is equal to a side flip. It's just so much more useful, and using it to shield yourself from barrels is the only way to beat the penultimate boss. Lastly, and probably my least used move in the game, the triple jump. To perform it, you have to press jump as soon as you hit the ground from a handstand jump, and all it does is make you go just a little bit higher. But honestly, I don't think there's a single point in the game where it's required or even benefits you. There are plenty of situations where hitting jump as soon as you hit the ground in your handstand state is beneficial for reaching platforms, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't happen a single time for the triple jump. There's also these fun little cutscenes in between worlds explaining these moves, as well as new mechanics. Overall though, the moveset in this game is really good, and makes the game like 10 times more interesting. It's also utilized really well in the levels themselves, which I guess I should talk about now. Interestingly, unlike Donkey Kong for arcades, this isn't entirely an action game. Comprised of most of the levels are elaborate puzzles making use of your moveset and the various interesting level gimmicks, like a levers to open and close doors or platforms, wires you can swing on to reach otherwise unreachable areas, icicles that can act as platforms once fallen, a bunch of shit that's really cool. The goal of each puzzle is to find the key and get it to the corresponding door, but it's not as simple as it sounds. Unlike a lot of games where the key simply goes in your inventory, you actually have to carry it around, which doesn't sound like much of a change, but this mechanic is put to use by a whole lot of the puzzles. The changes that this mechanic adds include being able to put down the key, allowing you to do other things like climb ladders or flip levers, but also put you at risk of running 
running down the timer and resetting the key back to its normal position. Being unable to climb ladders, needing you to either put it down or find a workaround, and are easily the biggest change, being able to use your unique moveset while holding it, only being able to walk and jump. While it might sound like an annoying feature, a lot of the time it makes puzzles way more interesting because of the complexity of the workarounds you have to find because of these changes. There are also a myriad of other items, but the key is the most common. The first item introduced in the game is the hammer, and it functions exactly as it does in the original, but it also shows off a minor addition to Mario's moveset, being able to throw it up in the air to pass it from floor to floor or just get rid of it. This is used with the addition of the super hammer, which functions the exact same with the addition of being able to break bricks in front of you, including the ones on the ground. The ability to pass it from floor to floor is used more here than with the regular hammer, but it's still rarely used, which is the opposite of what I have to say about what I have dubbed the platform places. Touch one of these and you get to place a block of a certain type for a set amount of time. The horizontal one creates a semi-solid platform, the vertical one creates a ladder, the block creates a single block, and the spring creates, you guessed it, a spring. I don't have any standout examples of this being used, not because it's bad, quite the opposite actually. It's just that all the uses of it are good and I can't think of a single bad case of when it's used. That could be to do with the mechanic itself, as it's just hard to fuck up in general. It's done really well, as not only do you have to think fast once the timer starts, but you also have to think about where to place it in the first place, it's great. The one item I don't think is as good as the poison mushroom. It's introduced near the end of the jungle world and it shrinks you down temporarily, disabling most of your abilities like climbing, swimming, and most of your moveset. This could easily be used for a lot of puzzles like going under low ceilings or using the lack of swimming ability for something, but I don't think it's ever used for puzzles and mostly serves to annoy you and waste your time. I think my biggest compliment I have to give to the puzzles in this game is that it's never focused on a bunch of different ideas at once. It'll only be focused on one or two things throughout the entire level which keeps it much less cluttered. But the levels are also short enough that the single idea being the focus doesn't get tiring. They still manage to fuck up the levels after World 4 but it helps them be better at least. However, outside of the puzzles are two level types that I'm really not a big fan of, being what I call action stages and boss stages. The action stages are still alright but much less interesting than the usual puzzles. Much like the arcade game, the goal is to reach Pauline who's usually at the top. I think the reason why they're not as interesting is because they're pretty mindless. The more challenging ones can be quite engaging, especially 3-4, but more often than not it's pretty easy and the only way it can be challenging is if it's one of the levels where Donkey Kong stomps. When DK stomps, you're stunned for quite a bit if you're on the ground, and also objects fall from the sky which can kill you if they come in contact with you. These can be decently challenging, but only because of the stun and almost never because the objects themselves are hard to dodge. The action stages being pretty lame is especially a complaint for the final world, as with the exception of the last two levels being bosses, every single level is an action stage and there is no puzzles. Overall, the action stages are pretty underwhelming. However, they're certainly a lot better than the bosses. I'm not going to show it. Other than the final boss, these are pretty fucking boring. Donkey Kong sits at the top of the screen and as Mario you gotta throw the barrels he throws back at him and it's really not that hard. Donkey Kong will throw or roll barrels to the left or right or drop them down the middle and it's just so easy to dodge them. I think the worst case of this has to be the penultimate fight. It's the exact same as the others except it has wind. It's still way too easy to dodge the barrels but it makes grabbing them nearly impossible. You have to use the handstand to shield yourself from them to which they will enter a state in which they're possible to grab. But I swear to god bro, the wind makes it like impossible to do so. The final boss is certainly the best in the game, but fairly underwhelming for the end of the game. Donkey Kong slams his fist on the ground causing a bunch of things, including barrels, to fall down. The platforms on the left and right are semi-solids meaning the barrels will fall off them, and you have to use the handstand to grab them. But throwing the barrels at him by using this method is a lot harder because more often than not, DK will slam the ground with his fist causing a barrel to disappear. The easier method of attacking is by climbing on his face, then on his fist, and and finally to the platforms at the top of the screen and grab any barrels that could have fallen on the middle platform. After that you jump down and throw the barrel at his face. After the first two hits he'll gain a new attack where he slams his fist together and after the fourth hit he'll gain another attack where he rapidly slams his fist on the ground. It was a lot easier than I originally thought it would be and for a finale it's pretty weak. There are a few things I wasn't able to mention because they don't really relate to many things I was talking about so I guess I'll mention them here. This game actually introduced a ton of things to the series. It's pretty crazy. Yudong City? Yeah, that's from this game. The side flip and the triple jump that are most famous for appearing in Mario 64? Yeah, they're from this game. The mini mushroom in New Super Mario Bros is from this. The ropes that you swing on in Mario Sunshine are from this. A few songs in Wario Land 2 are from this. It's pretty crazy. 
It also takes a lot of inspiration from the original Donkey Kong arcade games, oh, well, clearly. Most obviously, the first four levels are from the original Donkey Kong, but the vines you can grab onto, DK Jr. himself, and even an entire stage that are all from Donkey Kong Jr. are in this. You can even pick up objects and a few enemies like in Mario 2. Speaking of Donkey Kong Jr., he's in this game, but sadly he plays a pretty minor role. He can flick switches at certain intervals and throw poison mushrooms in sun levels. That's basically it, and his presence changes basically nothing. That being said, I'd still say this is a good game, despite all the complaints I had. You can tell the developers put a lot of passion into this project, and it shows, especially on those first four worlds. All the worlds, save for forest, jungle, and desert, have very unique themes, with my personal favorites being the city, aeroplane, and the rocky valley. And overall, it's just a pretty fucking solid game that at the very least, you should try the first four worlds of. I've never played it until now, and I'm certainly glad I can say that today. I had fun. Nevertheless, I was pretty disappointed by most of it. The beginning, especially World 3, was really good, and I was not expecting that much of a fall off. Despite that, I would rate it a solid 7.5 out of 10. Donkey Kong 94's biggest falter is the second half, but if you're willing to try it out, I'm sure you'll have a great time with the first four worlds. Okay, look, I don't have an outro, so great, I have to talk about Mario Sunshine next. Cool, bye.